In this video, I'm going to talk about using a rain jacket and where are they? Rain pants as a vapor barrier liner. This is an interesting question I received on my YouTube channel. Thank you very much to Axel W. Axel W writes, I saw a tip on an ultralight backpacking presumably channel that a rain jacket and rain pants can double as a vapor barrier instead of packing a separate vapor barrier. Any thoughts on that? Ooh, good question, Axel W. So one of the things is this mystical vapor barrier liner. What does vapor barrier liner mean? That means you put something else literally on you that is plastic like that or is completely non-breathable. That way you keep heat and moisture in. Now, one of the options you can absolutely do when you're in your sleeping bag and you're trying to bundle up and it's cold and things are getting dank is the big worry is your perspiration, your transpiration from your heat and moisture from your body and your breath is going to soak your sleeping bag. Yes, it is going to get it wet, as long as you are still alive, your body is worth roughly a 100 watt incandescent light bulb that will push the moisture in a vapor phase through the down or synthetic bag and out into the air. Now I've got videos on how to dry your bag. When that doesn't happen, check it out in my channel on sleeping bags. But the question is, can you literally use your raincoat and your rain shell pants as a vapor barrier liner in your sleeping bag? Absolutely. The problem is you don't want to. That is miserable. Because what will happen is when you've got this vapor barrier liner on and you're trying this out at home, totally comfortable, right? No problem. However, once I crawl into my sleeping bag and I get in there and it starts to warm up, even though this fabric is supposed to be breathable, yeah, in mild conditions with your slightly warm body and these pants are not breathable at all. They're just pure shell pants. You're going to be, oops, you're going to be cold and clammy. So I absolutely would say I would use that in a last ditch effort to stay warm. I did have to use my vapor barrier liner a few times in Antarctica on the Denali, maybe once, but it is so unpleasant to sleep in, in that clammy, warm, but still cold, and you're getting wetter environment, that's just really unpleasant. The best way I've found, in my humble opinion, is to sleep with basic clothing on, synthetic or wool, never cotton. Sleep in your sleeping bag. Know that your sleeping bag's going to get somewhat wet. The vapor kind of goes out, and it's mostly dry in the morning, but sometimes it's a little bit wet and then dry the sleeping bag in the morning. Because once you're wearing these things and you're in your sleeping bag and you're cold and clammy, you're not going to have a good time. So yes, you're warmer, but psychologically, you're going to start associating camping and being out the, in the outdoors with having bad nights of sleep. And subconsciously, you will start to say, screw this. I am not going out and camping because I'm miserable every night. So is it a backup plan? Yes. Is it the main plan? No, don't rely on that. Please, please don't. I hope this has been helpful to you to help you understand about using vapor barrier liners in your sleeping bag. Yes, viable, comfortable, no, long-term winner, probably not. My name is Aaron Linsdow. I'm a polar explorer and professional adventurer. Please check out links below in the description to my books, Antarctic Tears, Lost at Winnie Corner, Adventure Expedition 1, How to Keep Your Feet Warm in the Cold, The Jackson Hole Hiking Guide, The Most Crucial Knots to Know, and the 2024 Total Eclipse Guides, as well as check out show my show in the links to Antarctic Tears. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe to the channel so you can get more information like this.